In this video, we'll look at animation hierarchies through the translation of a ball across the screen. You'll notice as you watch the ball animating across the screen that it both translates and rotates. To set this up, we need to group the object into an animation hierarchy. If I look in the Select by Name tab, you'll notice that I have a group that's called Ball Translate. Nested inside of that is a group called Ball Rotate, and at the base of this hierarchy we see the sphere geometry. The rotation of the sphere is applied directly onto the ball rotate group and the translation of both the rotation and sphere geometry is applied to a group called ball translate. If I select the sphere at the moment the groups are all open so you'll notice that on the sphere proper we see no keys showing up in our timeline. There's no animation applied directly to the sphere geometry. We could continue to modify the sphere, of course. It's available to us um, as a geometry. It's subdivisions and radius and so forth. If I go to the group pull down and close the group, I'm now at the level ball rotate. You'll see with ball rotate selected that there are only two keyframes here in the timeline. Those two keyframes amount to a full 360 degree rotation of the sphere. The full 360 degree rotation of the sphere occurs in 24 frames. And so I also want to consider the duration of my animation to account for a full number of cycles. So if this should play in a loop, it would be seamless from beginning to end. If I should close the group again, we'll now see that we're at a level called Ball Translate. And Ball Translate also has two keyframes, but they reside at frame 0 and frame 119. The keys that we see here at 0 and 24 are the keys that exist at the level below inside Ball Rotate. The two keys here on Ball Translate are equivalent to the beginning and the end of a path that this ball, this animation assembly, has been attached to through the motion controller. Let's go ahead and take a look at that first and then back up to the ball rotate object. With the full assembly selected, I drew a line across the screen here that was equivalent to five cycles. Now, for the ball to look like it makes sense as it rolls, the distance it's covered needs to be equivalent to the circumference um, of one rotation. So as the ball rotates once, it's going to move along the screen here the equivalent of pi diameter. This is about 100 units in my particular setup. So over the five cycles, the ball or sphere is going to travel roughly 500 units across the screen. So I've drawn a line that's that length, and then what I do next is attach the sphere directly to this line through the motion control tab. I go to the motion control tab, we'll find the assign controller rollout, and what you're trying to affect here is the position of the ball in space and time. So I'll select position, and once I've done that, then the Assign Controller tab is made available to me. I click on this, and what I'm looking for is a path constraint. Path constraint has already been applied to the ball, so I don't need to apply it again. I would just click OK if this was the first time. I'm going to click Cancel now since it's already there. Once I've assigned this controller, I essentially strip away the capacity of Ball Translate to be handled interactively or manually simply by keyframing the ball across the screen. It can now only be translated by virtue of this path that's been established. To add the path, I will click on Add Path, find the geometry that's going to be used, and we should see that it shows up here in our list. Then it's a matter of setting up keyframes that correspond to the percent along path. Now in my particular example, I'm just assuming that I'm following the full length of the line, so no keyframes are necessary. The software will automatically establish keyframes at the beginning and the end, which correlate to the beginning and the end of the line. Should you choose to have the ball move faster or slower along the line, then you'll need to set up auto key and adjust the percent along path accordingly. Only translation occurs at this level, no rotation. An important thing to uh, note about setting up a hierarchy like this, should you decide that translation in this particular assembly is no longer appropriate, or 
you would like to set up a new path and rebuild this, we could simply go to group and ungroup and we would lose the translation aspect of this animation. You'll notice now as I scrub back and forth, we're only finding rotation on the ball. The translation no longer works. Next I'm going to uh, look more carefully at ball rotate. If I select group and open, we can now gain access to ball rotate which is nested inside ball translate. With ball rotate selected, once again you'll notice just two keyframes. How is it that I can get by with just two keyframes as this ball continues to rotate across the screen? What we'll do for that needs to be accessed inside the curve editor. You'll notice we see the curve here that represents the rotation um, of the ball between frames 0 and 24. And then beyond that you'll notice that the cycle continues in a kind of dashed line. First of all, I want the rotation to be constant, so I've flattened out my curve here by selecting the function curve keyframes and adjusting the in and out profiles. Next thing we've done is gone to the controller pulldown and I've used an out of range type. An out of range type allows me to establish cycles for something that recurs over and over again within the length of the animation. So for example, rotating wheels, um, a walk cycle of a, of a character, a mechanism that continues to loop and cycle. So in this case, I am go I've established a loop out of range type and simply by selecting that, the software has repeated the cycle indefinitely. And I've asked for this to occur both into and out of uh, the sequence. So if we should watch this from a number of camera angles, it would seem seamless that the ball continues to rotate into and out of the scene.